Yo, yo, watching the Screaming Fish here, people, and once again, I'm here for another video, but this time, uh, it's not so much a review, it's more of a countdown, but not like a top 10 countdown, more like a 10 reasons countdown. So, basically, it's the video, as you can imagine, the video is called 10 Reasons Independence Day Resurgence Sucks. Now, I know this is a lot more negative than my usual videos, because I, admittedly, I've seen some really good movies this year, like Star Trek, for example, I mean, that blew me away. So did Deadpool, Captain America Civil War, that kind of stuff. But, how, however, uh, I have seen my fair share of bad movies, like Zoolander 2, for example, and also Independence Day Resurgence, as a matter of fact. And, unfortunately, I did not enjoy any of those, and also... I, after watching Independence Day Resurgence, I could not be asked to do a review because of how uh, shockingly awful it was. So, yeah, I basically thought, you know what, I'm just going to do a 10 reasons it sucked. So, before I get into this, I'd just like to say there are some things I like about Independence Day Resurgence, just some. For one, the visuals, it is undeni undeniably visually good looking, and... And I'm not going to lie, the young actors did a good job of what they had. But, unfortunately, those are the only things I liked. And, yeah, so you can pretty much see why I didn't want to do, do a review. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into 10 reasons Independence Day Resurgence sucks. Starting with number 10, it's Independence Day 1 again. Aside from a few plot points and scenes, this movie feels like a complete rehash of the first movie. For starters... Two of the film's main characters have have a bad history together, like Jeff Goldman and Bill Pullman's characters did in the first movie. Judd Hirsch ends up crushing his it, crushing his boat boat later to hitch a, ha a ride in a bus, almost exactly the same way Will Smith's character crashed his fighter jet and hitched a ride in a bus. The first thing the aliens destroy is the landmarks, like in the first one when when they destroy the White House. And the final battle takes place in Area 51 on the 4th of July, coincidentally. Like in the first movie. Because of this, I can't even call this Independence Day 2. No, I'm going to call this movie Independence Day 1.5. Why? Because it's basically a sequel that's a rehash of its predecessor. So, uh, reason number 9, the side plots. The side plots are just come off as boring. One reason being because they're introduced into the movie and then immediately dropped and forgotten about until the very end of the movie. For example, the plot that involves another alien species coming to Earth to evacuate the humans from uh, from Earth before the aliens come and trash the place is an idea that I really liked. I was really hoping they would explore it a little more, but they didn't. But they didn't. Instead, it's brought up briefly, explained, and then. That's the last we actually hear of it for pretty much the rest of the movie. Effectively turning one of the movie's most essential plot points into a very brief side plot. Not to mention, the side plot set in Africa is only there to set up the alien attack later in the movie and introduce a character that is given almost no development at all, and that's about it. Will Smith dragging an, an alien corpse across the desert is an interesting side plot. Judd H Hirsch hitching a ride in a school bus with a bunch of kids is not an interesting side plot. Uh, not at least not to me. Not to me at least. So number eight is that it's it's rushed. Let's put it this way: this is a really fast-paced movie. Yes, it's two hours and nine minutes long. I'm aware of that, but that's only because of the extra side plots they've added into the movie. The main story doesn't give enough detail as to what is going on or development to its characters that that it just ends up feeling like there's a guy whispering in your ear and just saying okay so they're going to do this and then they're going to do that no details required at least that at least that's what it felt like to me so yeah that's what it felt like to me it just felt rushed i can I, I don't even need to explain that anyway Anymore. So, reason number seven, it has a very severe lack of originality. You're probably thinking, Fish, what are you talking about? There's tons of new stuff. And yes, it is set in an alternate 
2016, where everything is now futuristic and there are spaceships, which I do like. But other than that, there really isn't much else. For starters, the alien ship is basically a bigger version of the ship from the first movie, and taking Dubai and dropping it on another city is pretty much the same evil plan Ultron had in Avengers 2, only difference being one trying to blow the whole world up by by lifting a city out of the, out of the ground and the other just blew up just to blow up one city. Plus the main hero is a really cocky and full of himself full of himself kind of guy, similar to characters like Jim Kirk from the Star Trek reboot trilogy. And countless other movies I've seen with that with that character trait. That 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 I've used that character arc as well. And having a space station built on the moon is something I've seen in so many other movies. And yes, I know, I am aware that it's really hard to think of original ideas these days, but this movie just lacks so much so much of it that it just feels been there, done that. Uh, pretty much proving my point that it's pretty much a rehash of the first one, almost. So, number six, the aliens themselves. The trailers make it look like the, that the aliens have changed in their battle tactics and etc. But in this movie... Nothing really changes as they use the same same tactics they used in the first movie. Not to mention they're pretty dumb. For starters, one alien literally explains their entire plan to the humans. The very things they're trying to destroy. Not to mention that whenever they're in a gunfight with the humans, it's like they're flipping stormtroopers. They just keep missing or they'll just wait for one of their own to die first and then start shooting. Good idea. It's because of these problems that they don't feel like a threat to the audience. They just look like a bunch of idiots pretending to be stormtroopers until they hit something. So, uh, so now we're down to the top five reasons. Okay. Um, yeah, so number five goes to annoying slash dumb characters. The characters in this, in this movie are really dumb and really annoying. After stopping a possible alien attack, for example, the President of the United States, instead of doing something to prepare for for another attack, she literally says, Oh no, we'll just uh, do that after the celebration. Without even suspecting another attack, she just orders a celebration instead of preparing for another attack, which could very well happen, and does actually happen later in the film. Not to mention, there is this character in the movie that was so beyond annoying, and unbearable to the point where I can't even recall his name or the name of the actor. Plus, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Please forgive me if I'm not. De Obia Opares. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, please forgive me if I'm not. Uh, his character does nothing but stare in anger at things and barely has any character development aside from a scene involving his katana blades. I also find it weird that one character would have have a go at Liam Hensworth's character, or as I like to call him, Thor Jr., for saving everyone on a spaceship, or no, or no, when he stole one of their own one of their ships. So yeah, as you can see, the cap the characters I find at least are pretty dumb and pretty dumb and annoying. So number four goes to the gaping plot holes. There are a lot of plot holes in this movie. For starters, how did they not know there was still a working alien spacecraft still on Earth for 20 years? Or how human characters can pilot alien spaceships so brilliantly despite the fact that they're never flown what they've never flown one of those kind of ships before or let alone been in it. And yes, some of you are going to be saying their ships are made of the same technology as the human ships, at the moment at least. And yes, I'm aware of that. But what I mean is is that the aliens are 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 going are going to have like the aliens controls to the ships are gonna be different to the humans. And the human ships are built like fighter jets and are piloted like fighter jets. Jets. And the alien spacecrafts aren't built like that and they're going to have different controls to the humans. So how did the human characters figure out how to fly the fly the, the alien spaceships in literally three seconds. There are more plot holes in this movie, but I can't go over them all because it take me about two hours. <laughs> oh, 
So yeah, so number three, its only purpose is to set up Independence Day 3. The majority of this movie movie's purpose is really just to set up part three. What I mean, for starters, the humans using the alien technology to build their own ships and weapons, the aliens coming back for more and then revealing and then revealing that that the orb thingies that with the orb, orb thingies help, they can the humans can use interstellar travel to take the fight to the aliens. All of it just feels like its only purpose is to set up the third act, and if that's the case, then they really haven't done a good job job at that thanks to re way too fast paced storytelling and etc so and yeah so reason number two poorly executed action sequences the action sequences aren't executed well for starters the ground action sequences involving the gun battles is like watching stormtroopers trying to shoot something and missing about 60 times in a row n in a row, no one actually hits anything, and when they do, it's like the aliens are just running into the shot, into the 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 scope of the gun. The, like they just want to die. Even humans would do that sometimes in a movie. Also, the ship battles or dogfights, as I like to call them, are just disorientating to watch. I could barely tell what was actually going going on because they were so poorly poorly shot, and they were just shot from so many different per perspectives it was hard to tell but whenever there was a wide shot of the whole thing which probably would have been nice to see there was so much stuff flying around that it was almost impossible to see what was what the heck was actually going on so yeah i, I rest my case <laughs> so number one the the one reason i don't like independence day resurgence is that the whole idea doesn't make sense what do i mean by this exactly well Think about it. Why would the aliens come back for uh, for Earth one more time with only one ship to destroy the entire Earth? And yes, I know the ship is the size of the equator, but but why only come back with the one ship when you could come back with a whole fleet of fleet of those ships and give humanity an even slimmer chance of survival? Not to mention, all of this has to take place on the fourth of July because the movie is called Independence Day. It just doesn't make sense sense to me, and you th and you would think the aliens would have learned from their last encounter with the humans. They really haven't. It just doesn't make sense to me. So, yeah, guys, uh, those are my ten reasons I do not like Independence Day Resurgence. Uh, I know, I know, it's ne it's a lot more negative than I than my usual videos, but that's only because. I've seen a lot of really great movies that have come out in 2016, and I guess, I guess like, movies like Zoolander 2 and Independence Day Resurgence, for example, are kind of like a first for me. I mean, yeah, I've reviewed some bad movies in the past, but admittedly, um, Independence Day Resurgence, just, I, I couldn't be bothered to do a review because of how much I didn't like it, to the point that I couldn't, or I could, or I, I just couldn't find anything good about it. Admittedly, it's not as bad as movies like Zoolander 2. I didn't hate it the way I, I hated Zoolander 2. There are some things I like about the movie. The visuals, for, st for starters. It is visually stunning, and the young actors really do give it their all. And so do the so do the original cast, but it just it, it, it's just not a good movie, in my opinion. And, well, if you're a fan of, of really dumb action and s d dumb action-packed science fiction p films, then this is the movie for you. But if you're sort of like me, who prefers character development and and substance over style, then this movie really isn't for you. But anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Do hope you enjoyed it. And I will indeed see you in the next one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook. See you guys later. Goodbye, guys.